Hi guys, this is Jason with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode one of a brand new series called Practical Website Development with Drupal. Now, I know that there are a lot of Drupal tutorials out there on the internet right now, but none of which that I've seen quite like what we're going to do. We are going to take a fresh installation of Drupal, and we're going to move through all of its working parts, its modules, its content types, all of that stuff, and in the end, we're going to have a fully featured, fully stylized website that you can place on the internet and call your very own. Now, Drupal is PHP based, which means you need to have some sort of server environment to host the files on. You have two options here. Option number one is to rent server space and host your files over the internet. Now this is the end result of any website that you actually want people to see. But if you're learning for the first time, this can be quite a pricey endeavor. So option number two is to download a local server environment and host the files on your computer. Now no one other than you are going to be able to see your website, but it is free. So uh, you need to decide which one of those two options is right for you and go forward with that. Now, we're not going to cover how to install those local server environments, but I will include a couple of links in the description of this video. If you guys really, really want me to show you how to get one of those installed and up and running, just send me a tweet or a comment in the video uh, comments here, and I will do that for you. Um, so let's get started. Uh, once you have your server environment installed, or if you're hosting over the internet, you need to move into the PHP My Admin section of your site. Uh, with uh, XAMPP, it is through localhost forward slash PHP My Admin. And what we're going to do is create the database that's going to be the back end for our Drupal installation. Um, so we need to navigate over to the databases section and we need to create a database. Uh, we can name it basically whatever we want. I'm going to call mine one stop just to keep things simple. Um, from the little drop down next to it, we need to scroll through all of this and search for UTF-8 General CI, which should be somewhere near the bottom. There it is and click create. Um, optionally, you can also create a separate user uh, specifically for this database. And if you are on a live server, I would highly suggest doing that. Um, but for our local testing purposes, the default user that comes with XAMPP is perfectly fine. That's it. Once this database has been created, we never have to come back here again. We will manage an interface with this database entirely through Drupal, and at times we won't even realize that that's what we're doing. So step number two is to navigate over to Drupal.org, and we need to download Drupal itself. Drupal is a free open source platform, so we can head on over there and download it and get started today. So, we need to go to Drupal.org, click this Get Started with Drupal tab, click Download Drupal 7.23, which is the latest version as of the recording of this video. I know that Drupal 8 is coming soon, but as of right now, we're on 7.23. Um, and you need to select the version that you would like. We are downloading Drupal 7 and not Drupal 6, but it is available if you're interested in downloading and playing around with that. And I would also suggest downloading the stable releases in the green box. The red box is a dev release, which may or may not contain some sort of systematic bugs, and it's not something that Drupal typically suggests for a production site. There are some modules that we may download that are in dev state, but as far as Drupal Core itself goes, you're much safer downloading the stable release. So either download the tar or the zip file, and uh, I've already done that so that we don't have to wait on that, and then navigate over to where you've downloaded that and extract it. Um, I've also done that to save a little time. 
Um, within the extracted folder, you will find a folder with the exact same name. Um, and this is our site folder. And we need to rename this site to match what we want people to type in the URL when they come to our website. For ease of use, I'm going to call mine One Stop. And you can call yours whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then the next thing we need to do, if you're on a local host, you need to navigate to the back end of where those files are stored. In XAMPP, it's under the htdocs folder. And then we simply just need to drag our site into our server. And once that's done, we can head on back over to our browser window. Search localhost forward slash and then the name of our website and that will bring us to the Drupal installation window um, we want to select standard there are some other pre-configured versions of Drupal that you can download but for our beginners purpose we're going to go with the standard installation so click save and continue um, English is just fine and now this is the portion where we link our Drupal installation to the database that we just created and here we need to make sure that we give it the name of the database that we created and by default Zamp has a user called root without a password um, if you have opted to create a user go ahead and enter that information in here and then click save and continue and Drupal will do its thing and it may take a few minutes just to run its installation process getting the database connected to the front end of Drupal so we'll wait on that for a moment okay once that's done you'll be presented with the, basically your final configuration window um, it's going to ask you for a site email address. If you are working on a production site and you are going live, it's very important that you enter in an email address that's actually valid. Um, for local offline testing purposes, uh, email at email.com is just fine, or you can enter in your actual email address if you want to. Um, if your computer has a valid internet connection your local host will still send you emails from your test site just a little heads up alright for the site maintenance account we need to create a username I'm gonna keep mine real consistent with the one stop here this is gonna be your login to actually log into your Drupal installation and obviously the password goes along with that and we'll cover how to log in and get yourself set up for the default country su uh, select whatever is the valid default country for you I'm the United States here I'm gonna uncheck this receive emails notification even though I didn't enter in an actual valid email address um, there's no sense in having Drupal run that process just to send to a, a dummy email account um, we are going to leave on check for updates automatically so that Drupal will allow us to to see when maybe there's a core update or there's other module updates. So that's something that's pretty important to leave on. Click save and continue. And now that we're, the process is finished, we can click visit your new site. And here's our fresh Drupal installation. In the next video, we are going to cover what all these tabs up here at the top mean um, and what all this stuff is all about. Um, now, there is one thing that I do want to show you that if you accidentally log out here or if you're playing around with your site and you get rid of this area here and you log out and you kind of panic and can't figure out how to log back into your website, um, it's just simply localhost. Um, the name of your website or if you're on a live server it would be www.yourwebsite.com forward slash user user and then once you get there 
you will be presented with the login screen. And this information is the information that you gave it on our initial setup here. And that will get you logged back into your site if you forget um, or if you take this block off and log out and don't know how to get back in. All right, guys, so this is episode one. I know I moved a little quick, but I wanted to make sure that we got Drupal installed and up and running so that we can actually dive into its contents and how to work with it to build a website. Um, so if you like this video, make sure you uh, like it <laughs> right below. Um, subscribe to the channel. Um, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in episode two.